Okay, so we, we'll kick off. Um, hi everyone, my name is Paddy Healy, uh, bringing this webinar today on what is an FM EDA. Um, this uh, is a, the first in a series of webinars. Um, hopefully you've had an opportunity to check out uh, the full sequence of webinars and um, check them out. They're basically building on what we look at today, what is an FMEDA, and bringing it all the way through um, for the eighth session, which will be using an FMEDA tool to carry out an FMEDA. So check them out if you haven't already signed up, and hopefully I'll see some or all of you back over the course of the five weeks. So yeah, let's get straight into it. What is an FMEDA? Um, it's Basically, FMEDA is an acronym for a failure mode effect and diagnostic analysis. Um, it was a method developed to predict quantitative failures um, for each failure mode of a device. And also the, the key element or uh, thing that was added to the, this type of analysis was the impact of automatic diagnostics. So we'll, we'll work through this as, as the webinar progresses. So a little bit first about Exit um, itself. Um, it was founded over 23 years ago by um, several of the world's top reliability experts. And as you can see over those 23 years, the company has certainly grown to become a global company um, and pretty much touches into every uh, time zone um, available. Um, some of the offerings from Exida uh, does three main facets to the company. Uh, we have the engineering tools division, uh, the certification and assessment division, uh, which is where I work doing FMEDAs, FMEAs and certification um, work. And then the, the third facet is the system lifecycle uh, services. So speaking today just sp specifically about the engineering tools division, uh, basically it's an in-house uh, software development team that develop uh, engineering tools such as Excellentia, which is a suite of integrated uh, tools that provide a streamlined work process for functional safety, cybersecurity, lifecycle system projects. And OEMX, which is another suite of integrated tools, and as I say, this is one I use on a daily basis. Um, again, it combines the various applications required to go from the requirements through to architecture or FMEA all the way through to carrying out an FMEDA. Um, and I suppose one of the, the cool elements of OEMX tool is the way the, the software is designed, it actually allows you to learn as you use. Um, so that's a, a really nice feature. One other um, area that Exida has a very strong um, aspect to is its reference material. So um, if and when you get a chance, we'll leave the links up at the end, uh, check out the website, uh, lots of reference material there, white papers, um, books, um, blogs, uh, also webinars such as the one today, uh, any, any previous ones are there to be played back. Uh, so you can look for any area that you might be interested in. But I suppose at this point, just to very quickly mention one other um, aspect to um, the reference materials is the comp component reliability database, which comes either in a handbook form or part of the tools we use, the software tools. Um, and again, this is where we get a, all our data when we're carrying out uh, FMEDAs. So about FMEDA, this is a, a quantitative um, type of analysis um, as opposed to where an FMEA analysis goes um, in some industries it still goes down to the component level and um, the newest technique um, that we do using an FMEDA we go down to the component level and um, doing the FMEDA and this is where we basically look at the failure rates and the failure modes for the components and map them back up to uh, the particular failure modes that have been previously uh, predicted during uh, an FMEA. So again, where an FMEA works from the top down, an FMEDA is like a bottom-up approach. Um, so you're working at the low-level components uh, at the board level and working your way back up. So if we look at a small example here, we have the our system design within that particular device or system. We have subsystem architecture, which could be your power supply, your communications board, and um, it could be your controller, the microprocessor element, um, and various other aspects like that. So 
in an FMEDA, we go from that kind of subsystem architecture level down then into each subsystem. So we'll take the power supply as an example. We then look at each component. In this example, the power regulator, we look for the comp uh, component failure data and like that, we pull that from uh, some reference source. And in our case, that's the CRD. Um, so here we get the particular failure modes and the failure rates specific to each type of component. And we do that uh, systematically throughout uh, the design. So one of the, the questions we get asked frequently at Exit is, when is the best time to do um, an FMEDA? And I suppose just anecdotally to, to give you an example, we had a customer who came to us quite recently uh, to do an FMEDA, and as it turned out, they had already done their hardware review, component selection, prototyping was already done, and they'd already started to uh, build their physical product. And they only came to us, to, or not specifically to us, but they only came to get the FMEDA done um, as a part of a, a box uh, ticking exercise and to basically ensure that they meted the required sill level that they were trying to achieve. As it turned out, when we did the analysis, they were looking for sill three. The analysis only enabled them to reach sill two. So they would have had to go back and done some uh, level of redesign. Um, so it's it's the I suppose the the key takeaway is the sooner you do an FMEDA, and that's pretty much at the time when you've uh, design you've your hardware design is completed, your component selection is finalised, and that's the time to do an FMEDA before any engineering time or money is wasted in actually physically building a, a prototype. So the FMEDA allows you to look at the component failure modes. Um, and see what impact each component failure would have on the overall system design. So as, as I say, the objectives of the FMEDA analysis is to identify design errors. So again, the sooner it's done, the better. It's also to predict the device failure rates for each failure mode, account for the impact of automatic diagnostics and manual proof testing. So unlike an FMEA, the FMEDA allows you then not only with the failure um, modes and the failure rates, but also to um, ascertain whether those uh, the diagnostics inc included in the design detect or don't detect a particular type of failure. And then lastly, um, also to predict the useful life of a device. Again, I previously came from the medical device sector, um, and an example I remember from working there was where a uh, a fairly big medical device manufacturer decided to redesign an ECG machine using a new component that had been released to the market. So the importance of the useful life there is they had no data to understand how long that component would use in, in an operational environment. And as it turned out, the component was failing three to four years after use, but the expected lifetime of an ECG machine would be eight to 10 years. So serious consequences there for not checking into um, the useful life um, of the component. So ultimately, when we do an FMEDA, what we're looking for is the reliability of a design, the availability of the safety function in a device, and also the, the probability of failure of a design. Um, and where we get this from is, as I say, we do our FMEDA using a component database. It doesn't have to be necessarily exit as there are other databases out there, but one of the key elements is to ensure that the database is verified with field failure data. From this then, we take our metrics, whether um, for each individual component, whether it will fail safely, dangerously, it will enunciate. We also need to know the uh, diagnostic coverage, so whether the diagnostics will detect a particular failure or not, the useful life as I just previously spoke of, and also the proof test coverage. And we take all these metrics and they're put into a system level uh, probability model. Um, and from this then we're able to ascertain the reliability, availability, and the probability of failure in a particular uh, device. So what information do we need when we're doing an FMEDA? So obviously the first step when we're carrying out an FMEDA is we do an FMEA. And with this, we basically, as it, as it says, we describe the failure mode and the effect of those failures within a particular design. And we do this down to a sub block level. 
From this then we take the device failures, the derived requirements, any action items, the automatic diagnostics and the proof test procedures. In the FMEDA we then incorporate also the hardware architecture and the, and the failure modes of each block, the schematic drawings, the bill of materials, the component specifications and we combine all this information and this is what allows us to carry out a successful FMEDA. So there are two methods as it were for doing an FMEDA, there's the conventional process um, and as I said you don't need a specific tool to do an FMEDA, it, it can be very easily done using um, an Excel spreadsheet and we'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment and also the next webinar next week will actually show the practicality of carrying out an FMEDA using a spreadsheet. But sorry back to this, an FMEDA using the conventional process is where we map the component failure mode to the device failure mode category and to give you an example of how this might work is we have an optocoupler here in a particular type of design the output of the optocoupler goes open circuit and this is done during the FMEDA and the effect of this is fail danger. And I'll show you now the difference. The, the other method of doing an FMEDA is where we map the failure mode of each component to the block failure mode. And I suppose the advantage of doing this is, again, we had a customer um, last year who came to us who needed their um, apply IEC 61508 to their design but also the industry they were in there was a specific EN standard that they needed to apply to their device and out of that EN standard they asked us to look at their design and figure out which blocks on which components might lead to a hazardous situation specifically fire or high voltage so because we did a block level functional um, failure um, process in the FMEDA, we were enabled to pin down which particular blocks in the design might potentially lead to these two particular hazards, and from that extract out with the information that the customer was looking for. So again, just to give you a little example of the difference here, where in the previous previous example, the optocoupler and the failure was linked directly up to the system level, whereas in this example here, the optocoupler, the failure mode again is still open circuit. But then the effect of that is on the block above or the block that that component is contained within. And that was ascertained during the FMEA. And from that then we get the failure, fail danger is the effect. So what we get out of doing the FMEDA is, um, and this is, you get this from a spreadsheet or using a particular tool, it makes no difference, but you basically get the failure rates per each device failure mode. You also get the predicted useful life, um, you get the diagnostic coverage factors for each device failure mode, and the coverage factors for each defined proof test. Now again, just to reiterate, to get this, this type of information from an FMEDA, it's important that you use um, a verified database for your component information. So speaking of the component database um, and what to look for in that particular um, part of the analysis, we need to find a database that contains all the data for all the components used in the product design. We also need to document the compo component failure modes and also the distributions. So basically what, what I mean by this is that the in the database it must also include um, the distribution for each component across each of the different uh, particular failure modes. The database also must document the component useful life. It must also provide the failure rates for various design profiles and operating environments. And what I mean by this is that when you use a database or a tool or a spreadsheet, um, one advantage is being able to change the particular operating environment um, that you are applying your um, analysis to. So whether it's subsea, sea level, uh, rack mount or cabinet mounted type device, all the way up to high altitude, you need to be able to change the profiles accordingly so that the, the failure metrics will also change accordingly. The database needs to be updated on a regular basis to keep up with changes in technology. 
uh, it needs to include uh, more specific things like the impact of an analog drift in components, include the impact of integrated circuit soft error rates. And as I said, if you are designing a product for high altitude where the soft error rates might become more of an issue, um, or uh, this, this is something that needs to be accounted for in your database. And then most importantly and finally, that the data is calibrated and validated against field failure data to ensure uh, that it's accurate. Another um, aspect of doing an FMEDA is the ability to uh, carry out fault injection testing. Um, and this is something that can be done practically. Um, looking at the slide here, we see a pair of insulated needle, lead, needle nose pliers, um, which gives you the ability to short out a component and see what that component failure might have on the overall uh, system uh, design. Um, but ideally, when doing an FMEDA in the, in the tool, being able to describe uh, the fault injection tests um, and see the, what diagnostics uh, might be required. So we'll look now, as I say, we'll, we'll just have a quick look now at the spreadsheet, but we'll have a look at it in a lot more detail next week. Um, these, this is basically just the type of information that you want to try and capture when you're doing an FMEDA using a, a spreadsheet. So obviously we want to give it a project title name. So in case someone else comes back to look at the analysis at a later date, they know which one they're specifically looking for. And this you might put in there, whether it's a project number or something like that. The next thing we need to capture is who the analysis was done by and also then who it was reviewed by. The next important thing, I suppose there's no importance in terms of order with these things, but the next uh, thing that we need to capture is the actual make mention of the database that is used and the version number of that database. So at least then at a future date, if the database is updated or needs to be updated, at least you can look back at an analysis and verify what particular version uh, was used during this analysis. So getting into the actual FMEDA, uh, the next stage then is we put in our parts. Um, so the part designator, we might copy that from the bill of materials to ensure consistency across the two documents. Then also the part type. Now the, the letter here, E2.1.1, that's a reference to the component reliability uh, database handbook um, that we use. So at least if we know, because there could be a number of diodes in the database, there could be Xenor, um, Schottky diode, whatever it is. So at least with that number there, you're able to go back to the handbook and make sure that you're referencing the exact one used in the analysis. And it also gives you the specific uh, failure rates for that component. The next column we look at is the quantity. So again, generally this will be one. However, if you had a particular uh, design where a number of components might be susceptible to a common failure mode, you could uh, condense them down into a single line and uh, put a multiplier in there in the quantity column. The next then is the failure mode. So whether um, what the particular uh, failure mode of this device is going to be, whether it's short, open, leakage, um, whatever that happens to be. And then of course the effect of that failure. So whether it's going to be safe, dangerous, enunciation, or you don't care. The next thing, and this is the information that we also get then from uh, the database or the handbook, whatever we're using, is the lambda or fits the failure rate um, per failure mode of this particular component. Also useful to incorporate into the spreadsheet is the diagnostic coverage. Um, so again, do the diagnostics um, detect a particular type of failure? Yes or no. If they do, to what level? High, medium or low? So all this information can be put into this column here. And then finally, in these columns here, depending on the type of failure mode it is, the effect, we then fill out the appropriate column, whether it's a safe dangerous uh, or safe detected, safe undetected, dangerous detected, dangerous undetected, so on and so forth. The metrics can be put into these columns. Just to mention, I suppose an advantage of using a spreadsheet is that some of those columns could be pre-populated with the formulas. So once you enter in the metrics from your database, um, it automatically then populates the appropriate uh, column as you move along your analysis. So 
I suppose some key things to look for in an FMEDA tool, whatever that happens to be, um, because just sometimes spreadsheets can be quite laborious. Um, so you, you might decide to, to look for um, a commercial tool uh, that's available on the market. So some of the things to look for are support for functional failure modes, embedded component data, which I, I think I've mentioned a few times at this stage is the CRD in our case, and the importance of having a field uh, verified uh, database, uh, subsystem analysis, uh, the ability to change operational profiles and automatically update your results. As I say, if you do a design um, for a particular 30-degree um, environment, cabinet, wall-mounted, but then all of a sudden you need to change that to having a lower temperature or a higher temperature, you need your results to update automatically. So in, in, in cooperation with that then is also the built-in calculation and rules calculated safety metrics, and then obviously support for various uh, functional safety standards. So again, as I say, the tool that I use on a daily basis is OEMX. It's a suite um, encompassing uh, RecX, which allows you to enter requirements, uh, all the way through to ArcX, which is for carrying out an FMEA. Part of ArcX is the expert knowledge that's built into it, and then Moving on from the FMEA, we do our FMEDA in FMEDAX, and the, the key component to this is our CRD. So, in conclusion, um, the FMEDA analysis obviously it can predict failure rates of electronic and mechanical devices. Uh, this information can be invaluable for reliability, availability, and func functional safety metric calculation. FMEDAs can be done with spreadsheets or a commercial tool. Um, and then component reliability database, as I say, is the most important part of any FMEDA analysis. But I, I think one other key takeaway from this webinar today is the time when to do an FMEDA. And it's when your design has been somewhat settled, but before any physical product is um, or prototype is being made. So again, if you get a chance, have a look at all the other um, webinars in this series. Um, please uh, sign up because um, they they do somewhat follow one from the other. As I say, we briefly touched on today with doing using a spreadsheet to do an FMEDA, and we'll go into that next week in a lot more detail, all the way through to doing an FMEDA using uh, the FMEDA X tool. So. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everybody for your attention today. Um, hopefully you have gotten something from this webinar. And at this point, I'd like to open the floor to any questions. Thank you.